Namaste everyone and welcome to this week's video. Thank you for pressing play and thank you for all the likes and the shares and the messages and the comments. Thank you very much. You're very, very kind. So we're recording this on Friday. It's going to obviously go live on Sunday. And I woke up this morning with that song, This Little Light of Mine, playing in my head. So my day started off just great. And I felt the sense of joy and just um, excitement, joy, peace. And I thought, oh, what a wonderful day. We're about to come into a very powerful period of time. And I thought, oh, isn't it great that everyone must be feeling this? And then I thought, no, kiddo, you haven't set foot out of your house. Um, you, you exist in this castle of spiritual peace and joy. And then you step out the door, whoop, that's another story. So I thought, oh, before you spread that energy of joy, love, excitement, wonder, perhaps everyone's not feeling that. And someone called round. And I was like, how is it out there? And they were like, ah, it's a bit crazy. Crazy it is. So welcome. Yes, I had some stuff prepared. I was going to do, last, last week we spoke about N for November. And I was going to do R. All the months, if you take all the letters, we only just do the first and the last because of time in this format. Basically, there's a spiritual process that happens to us month by month, or we can say... Um, sign by sign, astrological sign by sign, these things overlap. In this world that we live in, there are actually only certain crystalline formations are straight. They grow perfectly straight. In nature, that's the only thing that actually is straight. Humans like to create straight lines. Nature doesn't have straight lines except for certain crystalline formations. So there were seasons and seasons and cycles within cycles and it can sound so complicated and I can simplify it very easily. Breathe, your breath, conscious breathing. How long can you live without food? People are different, you know, maybe some people can live 20, 30, 40 days, depending on the conditions. How long can you live without water? Well, not as long as without food. People are different, you know, three, four days, some people maybe longer. But how long can you live without air? Not very long. Minutes, in fact. So if we all just consciously breathed, your breath, conscious breath, that means you're thinking about it. You're thinking about breathing. So now you're taking it out of the realms of purely functional, but you need it to keep you alive. And you focus on it, the breath of life. And you consciously focus on the breathing. You consciously focus on, I'm gonna breathe in through your nose. And then I'm gonna breathe out. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it a third time. Do it. Calms you down. What it's actually doing is it is connecting your body, your mind, and your spirit to this now moment, because this now moment is your moment of true reality. What happened yesterday, last week, 10 years ago, it's just a memory now. You can still be trapped by that memory, those emotions, that pain, that trauma, absolutely. But it is a memory. And the longer you hold on to it, the more it becomes a shackle. So you're living in the past. You are using that powerful point of 
creative, co-creating, yes, and you recreating the past in this now moment for it to manifest in your future. So breathing, and this week, it's important. Okay, so I was going to do the letter R, but when I woke up this morning, I thought, no, we have to dedicate this short video to explaining the power of this next week-ish. We're all different, depending on your vibration. What does that mean? If you are a person that is expecting the best, you are you have faith in something greater than you, you maybe you're a disciple, you're an initiate, maybe you're a follower, that doesn't matter, but you you look, you 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 conduct yourself with that level of personal responsibility and integrity, you're able to give the fruits of the spirit. So you're not operating from ego. You are saying, okay, you know, you did me a wrong, but I understand why he did it. Okay, maybe I don't want you back in my life, but I'm not holding that memory of that pain as a, holding me as a prisoner. You are able to let that go. You are able to let that cynicism go. You are able to let that jadedness go. Is there something wrong? I've got one. I printed two. Thanks. So we're coming to that point of the year where it is literally the end and the beginning. In fact, it is so wild. I'm not sure if it's every year. Can't be every year exactly. I can check into that actually, that's a good idea. But this year, we have the 11th of the 11th on Monday. Is that correct? Yes, on Monday. And we have the full moon in Taurus on Tuesday. So the full moon in Taurus is the end. Tuesday. I'll give you an analogy in a minute. But Monday is that day where we have an opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies and plant the seeds. So it's literally on Monday now when I say Monday, I mean, the energy is different depending on your vibration. However, our Father loves ritual. Let's not forget that. He loves ritual. He does not enjoy ritual for ritual's sake, I'll tell you. But ritual he does enjoy. How do we know this? Well, the sun rises every day. It's ritually. The seasons follow one another. Ritually. The tides go out and come back in. Ritually. Things happen ritually. Our Father loves ritual. Okay, so ritually, every year, we get an opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies. This year, we go in to plant the seeds. And then the very next day, it's the end of what was before. So, as an analogy, you're a seed, cloistered, that's my favorite word at the moment, and cleave, cleaving. You're a seed and you're cleaving to the seed pod. But some wind comes along and you're there and you're going, oh, oh no, I've got to let go, I've got to let go. If I want to live again in my next incarnation, in the next version of myself, I've got to let go of the old, I've got to let go of this seed pod. I've got to let go, I've got to let go. And a wind comes and you think, oh my goodness, this is the perfect thing I need. Just, can I surrender? Do I have the faith just to surrender? And you surrender. And you let go. And the wind takes you gently. Boop, 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 and you land on the ground. Boop. Okay, it's different. I mean, you were up in the seed pod. Now you're a bit... Mm, it, it, it's different. It's really different down here. But you surrendered. You let go. You had that faith that something greater than you has your back. And the very next day, the farmer comes along and chops down all the trees or all the plants or, that you were a seed of and goes off with it. And you think to yourself, whoa, 
Thank goodness I surrendered yesterday. Because had I not, I would have been hauled off, shaken about, and I could have fallen off anywhere. I could have fallen off in a rocky patch, no soil to grow. I could have fallen off from the pathway, and the birds came and picked me up. I got nothing. Okay, so. 11.11, we spoke about before that this is your temple. This is your temple. This is your temple. This part of your head is called your temples, in fact. I mean, how can we go wrong with this? This is your temples. So on the 11th of the 11th, you get to go into the Holy of Holies within your temple, whether you are aware of it or not. Being forewarned is quite helpful because you can take appropriate action. You can work with the process. Okay. So whether people are aware of it or not, that's actually what's happening. That veil, people talk about the veil. The veil is rent into, into, you know, that duality. Point is to transcend the duality. Anyway, we go into, consciously of it or not, everyone gets to go into the Holy of Holies within themselves and plant some seeds. And week by week, month by month, that journey continues and we grow it. But we cannot grow the new crops where the old crops were previously. We have to clear that ground. We have to prepare that ground and that's what these past few weeks has been about bringing all those things up, those weeds, all those things that are hindering your growth. You know, you're, you're a spiritual being having a human incarnation. Anywho, anywho, let's go for it. Monday the 11th, the Sun conjunct Mercury retrograde. The midpoint of the Mercury retrograde and where the seed of a new beginning is planted in the Holy of Holies. A time to cut back on any unnecessary activity to make space for a new beginning and spend time in reflection. Printers, not good. Spend time in reflection to allow the relevant insights to present themselves, but not to take any action quite yet. This week, we'll get on with the rest in a minute. This week, it's about... slowing down, while the rest of the world is in chaos, admittedly, okay. And spending time in reflection. You see, this is also the week, because it's the ending, you also start to understand the lessons why some of the madness has happened this year. You, you begin to understand the lessons, but hopefully you're having a look at these situations that have all played out. And in this next week, you are able to see the lessons. Okay, so if you spend time with our Father in the Holy of Holies, you have to be still, breathing, meditation, prayer, Prayer is a conversation. The meditating bit is the listening. And take time away from the world and go within the temple, your temple. Be still. Don't you think you owe it to yourself? Yourself? You were born, you, you came in on your own. You, when you, when you, I've got pins and needles. When you, in my leg. Um, in the left leg. <laughs> the left hand path is going lame. <laughs> and when you pass on into your, into what you were before you <laughs> were born, you're going to be on your own. So don't you think you owe it to yourself? To value yourself enough to take some time this week and just stop from all the 
the activity and all the thoughts and go into the Holy of Holies and plant your seeds. Okay? Plant your seeds. Next year is 2020. It's a four year, but it's so it's a four year and it's a 40 year that the zero always references that you can work very God is in control basically. Okay, so whatever you're creating, you want to be creating in divine flow. You want to be creating it in your personal life. It says God's will for you. In other words, what was the plan for you in your life? Okay, I, I had a whole plan for my life. And then I came to England. And because I moved, this is how powerful things are. Because I moved from one location to another, admittedly from one side of the world to another, my whole astrology changed. And I had to try to traverse how many houses? Two houses. Basically, I had to traverse the work of two houses in a very, very short space of time because it was like this is where I was and then because I moved it moved me there but I was physically still there in the 3D so everything had to it was like being pulled a force an uncontrollable force propelling my life to transverse all the lessons of two full houses just because I moved from one place to another that is how powerful the as above is Okay, praise God for that. So this week, it's about cutting back on all the craziness and being still as much as you can. And really, make a list. What does your heaven on earth look like? Because you get to go into the Holy of Holies and plant the seeds. Okay. Tuesday the 12th, okay, that's the full moon. We have the beginning, and then we have the chop. And also the opportunity then to learn the lessons, okay? And, yeah. An opportunity to reap the final harvest of what was sown at the new moon in Taurus, 4th of May. Smooth, it's a smooth flowing aspect from Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto. Can potentially help us use discipline, surrender and truth to rise above power plays and possessiveness as the full moon calls for balance between our capacity to generate physical resources and our capacity to share them in mutually beneficial ways. Whether we like it or not, the whole world is changing. You look outside and you see chaos and mayhem. Yes, this is the death and the crumbling, it may take a while, of what we refer to as the system. You can call it the Babylon system, you can call it the New World Order, call it what you like, I do not care. It's dying. But like any beast, it is wounded. The trumpet's been trumpeting. I mean, are we listening? Everything is moving back to oneness. And if you are able to transcend your own duality, beastie or priestie, and just be that priest, that priestess, that child of God, the spirit made manifest, we move the process along. You just need to shine your light. This is all to help you shine your light. On the same day, Mars sextile Jupiter. Jupiter is about expansion. An opportunity to apply a broad-minded awareness to our actions and desires so that our actions are guided by an understanding of natural laws and performed with a spirit of generosity and kindness. You can see already all this energy is showing you how to manifest the fruits of the spirit. Okay, but you've got to give it to yourself. So this week I want you to give yourself all of these things. Not at the expense of someone else. All I'm saying is spend some time away from the maddening crowd. 
Go for a walk. Do your meditations, breathe. And ask yourself pointedly, who am I? And what do I want out of my life? Waiting for some reward past the life, posthumously, is quite frankly a waste of time. On Wednesday the 13th, Sun sextile Pluto, an opportunity to delve into the depths of our being, to shine a light on and eliminate dysfunctional behavior patterns from our character so that we can radiate the light of truth. On the same day, Mercury retrograde, uh, Retrograde, trine, Neptune, retrograde. Ooh. An opportunity to cultivate greater mindfulness and reprogram our thoughts so that they are driven by love, compassion and unity rather than fear and anger. So this is the week if you are taking the path of the priest, priestess, a direct, a direct line, spiritual lineage. This is the week. But how are you going to spend time with God unless you get into that temple, man? Come on, Father. Come on. I'm off to the allotment in a bit. Yeah, I'm recording this on the front. Ooh, that's an awful lot. Recording this on Friday. Okay, so I'm recording this on Friday to go back on Sunday. So for me, well, you know, it's Friday. So after I'm done with this, I'm going to go up to the allotment and start my Sabbath early. We got seven. Okay. Rebirth. Can you make this up? I mean, rebirth. Okay, so at the moment that rebirth is about that, that internal rebirth, but we're not we're not really focusing on outward creation. Next year is a, is a, is, a, is twenty twenty. That's four. 14, zero. You need four points, four points of contact to build anything. So the four is telling us it's a building year. Jupiter is starting its next 12 year cycle. So whatever you're starting to build will be assisted by the Jupiter energy, which is the Messiah energy, the Messianic energy. It's kind of that expansion. We'll watch that expansion. Okay. But now the seeds, it's like you're saying, I'm going to build this and what do I need? Okay, so I need bricks, I need a digger, I need cement, I need all the things that you need to build what you're building. And what are you building? Okay? First of all, logic says, know who you are, then you will know what your heaven on earth looks like, and then you will know what you need to, to build. Okay, so we're in the Holy of Holies in, 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 in next week, 11-11, walking through into that Holy of Holies to plant the seeds, okay, rebirths, you know, some of us have been on this path for a long time, so in our Holy of Holies we've got trees, okay, and our trees now bear fruit and we can, people, that fruit helps people, but we also plant things that grow for a season and then we have the fruits and then we you know replant those seeds next year if it's part of what we need part of who we are or we go no that was a, no no thank you not for me i didn't really enjoy that uh, particular brand of pumpkin squash next year we're going for a different one okay so less activity which is ironic because we have the movement card There you go. What are you planting? First of all, you've got to know who you are. Okay. What are you choosing? And then some of the things are rebirthing. Other things are new seeds. Okay. But with any seed, if you don't plant the seed, you know, you come back tomorrow and you've got a huge tree. That's not reality. Okay. 
We also have nourishment, abundance, asking and receiving. Okay, go into the Holy of Holies. Father, I am your child. Help me. We also have the horse, which is about accepting help from others and delegating authority. One of the ways you can really help yourself is realize that in the great scheme of things, you know nothing. None of us really know very much, even the smartest people on earth. In what there is to know, we know nothing. Okay, but if you approach life, and this is interesting because this is sort of heading towards the Sagittarian energy. One of the pitfalls of the beautiful Sagittarian energy is believing you know everything. Okay, well. So accepting help from others, it's like this, like saying, yeah, take guidance, you know. Take guidance. If you don't know, go and ask. Um, also, if you feel that you need to carry the burdens of the world on your shoulder, um, maybe it's time that you delegate some of that. Some of us find the need to be all to, to, to all, you know, we need to be everything to every person. That's a very, that's a very, that is when the deceiver uses your own good qualities against you. Okay. We also have movement. <laughs> This movement is internal. Okay, look, there's water. This water is kind of still, but you can kind of see in the foreground that it's about to start picking up. Okay. This to me this week is saying that obviously it's going to be quite emotional. But water can be still. It can be... I mean, you can think of a lake. You know, that's fairly still. Then you can think of um, a waterfall. Uh, that's crazy. Then you can think of um, rapids, so lots of rocks. So the water's bouncing about through all these rocks. And then you can think of the ocean with the waves, water. What about a tsunami? That, you know, water is very powerful. So some of us are going to be having quieter energies. Our emotions are going to be flowing gently. And calmly, other of us, other, others of us are going to be like we're over the waterfall, boom. Others of us are going to be like holding on through the white river rapids, and others of us are going to be like waves, maybe a tsunami, sucking all that emotion in, and then unleashing it. Okay. You can control your emotions by stilling, becoming still, again with the breathing. All right. Spirit, integrity, the eagle, loving the birds. Spirit, integrity, connection to the angelic realms. Well, of course, of course, of course, if it will come out. Connection to spirit. This is the week. The veil is thin. No. You're going into the holy of holies, whether you know it or not. So work with the process. Sunday, Monday. Saturday, I'm recording this Friday, so we're gonna, I'm going to start the work. A whole bunch of us are starting the work on the Sabbath. On Monday, we've got a healing group. So, I avail ourselves of every possible opportunity to be in our Father's flow. Okay, so it's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of emotional energy. Now, one thing I want to rem remind you is like we're talking, and you can be going, Oh, my life is fine. Yeah, cool. Okay, but your life is, you know, connects to other people's, and other people's life collective energy affects us all so some of us might be the calm in the storm but then you know it's this very crazy energy out there and this is the week where everyone collectively is going into the holy of holies and planting seeds effectively are you let's think of sagittarius the top half is a man or a person and the bottom half is a horse a horse okay so 
some people are going to be choosing the, the sort of the lower level beastie part of themselves as this is who I am, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the beastie. And other people are going, you know what, you know what, I want heaven on earth. I'm taking the priestie, priestess route this time around. Okay. So of course, if you, if you are still and you use this time uh, for inner reflection, information will come this week without a shadow of a doubt to, to bring you closure on a lot of issues. Um, so it's important that we spend that time, that spiritual energy, spend the time with God, with our Father, with the Holy Spirit, and get the answers that you, you're looking for. Okay. The dog, which is loyalty, sincerity, and unconditional love. The eagle is also integrity. The dog is sincerity. Do you know what? If with integrity and sincerity, I don't think there could be one disagreement that could not be resolved in this world. Okay, another point, Taurus full moon. A lot of people, well, whether you have any Taurian in you, in your, in your chart or not, is Taurian energy, which is beautiful. However, one of the traits is, well, it's a symbol with a bull. Bull in a china shop, you're going to maybe see a lot of that energy around, like, Stubbornness, stubborn, 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 stubborn. Okay. Unconditional love, sincerity, and loyalty. I want to tell you to offer that to yourself this week. If I have a look at the demographics of the viewers, I'm not talking to people that are completely oblivious to spiritual matters. So. Sometimes I wonder, um, you know, but the reality is I just sit down and it comes out, so yeah. You have to offer that to yourself this week. It's all about self, but not the ego self, the spiritual self, acknowledging that spiritual self, because then that's the seed you're going to plant. And the last card for this week, my absolute favourite card in this week. <laughs> yes. Essentially, our Father is in control of everything. It's just helpful if you work with that. Not my will, but thine be done. How do you know what our Father's will is for your life? Because already it's imprinted in you. It's in your spirit. It's, it's your soul. It's in your soul. And your spirit is... Well, your spirit is already it, you know. It's just you believe you're something else. So this card is saying, at this time, it's about surrender. Release, surrender, integrity, sincerity, time of rebirth, the time of learning the lessons. But if you're all wrapped up in the drama and the chaos of the system, then by default, you're planting, you just chucking things in there and then three months later you wonder what what's going on not you guys the world so it is one of it would one it is a very powerful week coming up okay and i just feel really excited i just took another card it's the bee luck industriousness and sweet victory you know bees work really hard okay the result of all of their miles and miles and miles, and they're seriously endangered at the minute. The past of the priest, the path of the priest or the priestess, it just means you're choosing you. You're choosing the you that God made you, not the you the world tells you you, you are. It will always result in victory. And luck, it's a weird word, isn't it? It's too, uh, it's too flimsy for me. Will always result in that light. But it does take effort and discipline. Okay, and it starts this week. Spend some time with our Father. Consciously. Monday, the 11th of the 11th, Gateway. 
the, the end or the beginning and the end in close succession. Wow, what a marvelous, wonderful world we live in. Father, I love you so, so much. Bless us, bless us all. Peace be with you. Namaste.